Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Again, thank you so much for clicking on this video. In this video, guys, we're featuring Penelope. She is probably the smallest Shih Tzu I have ever groomed in my life. She's a tiny little thing. Um, you know, the one thing about grooming a really, really small dog like this is that it's, it's just as hard or, or challenging as grooming a big dog or any other big job. This is a big job in itself because the dog is so tiny, if that makes any sense. Uh, the reason for that is because dogs like this, they run nervous. They're very, very small. Just imagine being this small and everything around you is just huge. Everything around you looks like a monster. So the only thing a little dog like this can do is try to trust you in their care. And that's part of being a dog groomer is really being cautious with tiny little, little dogs like this. You have to be very, very careful. Um, our approach is different. Uh, you groomers know what I'm talking about. If you're doing a really, really small dog like this, you have to be extra careful. They have very fragile necks, very fragile bones. So um, we're going to work on her. Uh, it, basically, we're going to do a really, really short cut on her, uh, but I'm going to kind of show you what the challenge is. So let's get started in this. Okay, guys, so even though we're still going to be using a loop with this, but again, we're going to be extra, extra careful using uh, the loop. Um, we're not going to, uh, you know, uh, put any amount of pressure on her neck at all. And basically, uh, you're going to notice that I'm supporting her a lot with my left hand. Uh, she's going to move around a lot. She's very, very nervous. Uh, aside from that, she's actually an older dog, too. So that is part of the challenge. Um, but we're going to start off using a 5F blade. You can see how big the blade is. I mean, look at look at how big the blade is. See, all, all she wants to do is be held, you see? That's all she wants to do. And all I want to do is hold her. I really just want to hold this dog and play with her all day. But I have to groom her, and um, we'll, we'll hold her later. It's okay, Penelope. Come here, baby girl. I know. Um, so we're going to get started. Uh, and um, the key to this is always keep your hands on, always be around the dog, um, just don't ever, ever leave a small dog like this unattended on the table. Don't leave any dog unattended, but especially a tiny little girl like this, little dog like this. All right, so just gonna get started on her. See, look, look at the size of the clippers in comparison to Penelope. I mean, they're just, you know. The reason why I'm supporting her too is because, like I said, she's old, so she, she has weak legs um, and she doesn't stand very well. She's very shaky and I'm starting off with a 5F blade only because it's a little bit safer than starting off with a, with a 7F blade, but we may just finish her with a 7F. Even this, I'm reaching for my glasses, so I'm literally just going to hold her until I put them on. Like I mentioned, small dogs like this, they just tend to run very nervous. Um, they're like little hummingbirds. They run very nervous, and uh, it's just part of part of the job. Um, but we're just gonna keep reassuring her, and we're gonna keep her very, very safe because she's depending on us to do that, right? Um, we we take every dog individually. Every dog is just different every grooming is different and I've I've groomed Penelope in the past so I know her and she's a very very sweet dog she's an absolute angel of a dog but e even though she's staying still and being so good you know you could still nick her I mean these these blades are very unforgiving if they just come across the skin the wrong way especially on an older dog, because on older dogs, what happens too is the skin is very soft. 
You know, it's very soft and it's, it's a lot more pliable. So uh, as opposed to a younger dog where the skin is real firm, you're not going to uh, have as much of a challenge of not nicking them. I have her out of the loop now because I'm trying to get around her neck. But again, like I said, I'm just gonna be holding this dog most of the time. And we get a lot of comments where like how do you get the dog to stay so still and my dog would be freaking out and yeah that's true and there was a time where Penelope was freaking out too and not staying still but don't underestimate what groomers do we 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 train dogs to stay still by just repetition and letting them know that you know they're on the table and this is what they have to do for the time being. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't just happen. It happens because, it happens because we get them used to the process and we gain their trust. Good girl, Penelope, such a good girl. So I'm gonna switch blades here. I'm gonna go over to my 10 blade. So I'm just actually gonna do it like this. And you know, groomers need an extra arm and hand. That's what we need. Just gonna come down here and skim her a little bit with this 10 blade. It's okay, mama. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just doing a little skimming with the 10 blade, you know, because we're going to go short on this. The 10 blade is the more, the safer blade. We mentioned that a lot. Your 10 blade is going to be your safer blade. But again, just, you have to be just as cautious. Uh, I, I have nicked dogs with a 10 blade. So yes, they're, they're safer but you can still nick a dog with a 10 blade. So she's got a lot of nodding all around her face here. Uh, gonna try to get in there, get it all done. It's okay. See this big knot under her eye here. We might work that out in the tub. It's okay, sweetheart. Good girly. Good girl, good girl. Gonna do a little hand switch here. So uh, like I do a little move like that and just get the clipper in my left hand. If, if, if you can, guys, try to train yourself to use both hands. You know, if you guys are... It's okay, Penelope. I'm sorry, baby. Easy, easy. Easy, easy. Come on. Come on. Good girl, good girl. Good girl, good girl. A lot of matting right near the eye here. Like I said, we're going to work most of that out in the tub. Just kind of getting out what I can. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay, Mama. It's okay, sweetheart. Good girl, good girl. It's okay. This one right here has me a little bothered. Got it. Just, I just jumped off her face there because I don't want to keep going at the same thing. Good girl, Penelope. The baby girl. Yeah, if you jump off the face and then kind of go back to it, you know, you can get little, little clippings and you're kind of just tricking them a little bit, but you don't want to stay on one thing for too, too long. See how wobbly her legs are, guys? It's just a high-risk grooming. It's a very high-risk grooming when you're doing small dogs like this. 
um, actually going to, so this is what I do, honestly, I will literally just carry the dog uh, just to switch, just to switch off on clippers and blades. Um, it's uh, for safety. I don't even want to walk away from her a foot or two. Because in that moment, believe me, I, you, you, you run the risk of just the dog flying off the table. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a, uh, a snap-on comb. It's a, a four snap-on comb. Just a little safer, just to create, because she is moving her head a lot. So just to create a little bit of a barrier between the blade and her skin, a little safer. She does not like her head being done. So just kind of using a snap-on comb for safety. You can see how much she just pulls back and you know positioning her is a challenge. It's okay, baby girl. Come here. And this is the reason why I like to work slowly. I don't like to overbook, as we have mentioned in the past. When you're overbooking and you're just trying to pump this dog out, that's, that's when you're going to cut them. You're going to hurt them. And uh, you, you want to try to avoid that at all costs. Because you know? now they're at the vet. And, and now, you know, you're explaining to the customer, oh, yeah, you know, she moved the wrong way. You could see how much she's moving the wrong way. But like I said, if you're just going at it and trying to get it done um, without being cautious, you're, you're just increasing your chance of, of nicking or hurting a dog like this. You know, if she were a bigger dog, it would be a lot less scary. The fear in this is that she's just so tiny. She's so tiny. You know, I don't want to poke her with this, all that. There's, there's so much that goes into the thought process of, of grooming a dog. Um, you know, what, what you have to do is, as a groomer, even if you're grooming your dog at home, is you have to put yourself in a, a heightened state of mind. And you got to stay there. That's why we are exhausted at the end of the day. It's not so much the labor of, of doing the dog, although your back starts to hurt because you're standing all day and all that. What really tires a groomer out is the pressure. The pressure of this job is what tires a groomer out. We're, 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 we're tired. Sorry, baby. We're tired at the end of the day because we're in this heightened state of, of, of mind. Um, I'm just going to step over this way. It's okay, Mom. Go, girl. That's why we love when people say, oh, you know, it's so easy. It's just, a, it's a tiny dog. Yeah, it's, there's nothing easy about grooming a tiny dog. There's nothing easy about it. Is it less dog to groom? Sure, it's less dog to groom, you know. Is, could it be a little bit faster than, you know, than raking out a Husky or a, a big giant breed, a St. Bernard or something like that? Sure, but there's nothing easy about it at all. You're, as a matter of fact, like I just mentioned to you, you're even in a higher state of, of you know, pressure because you're, you know, you're trying to be cautious because you can just hurt the dog more easily. Um, so, you know, we're almost, I'm almost gonna call this prep over here. Uh, I'll do the rest later. But again, the purpose of this video is just small dogs, big jobs. That's what small dogs are. They're big jobs, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get through the rest of this, and I'll get I'll get the rest of this out on, in the tub.
and we'll show you what she looks like in the end. It's okay, Mama. Come here, sweetheart. I know we got to get this out of your eye, baby girl. It's okay. Let me see how I get this. Stay mama. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Okay, we got it. Good girl, mama. Come on, Penelope. I hold you. I give you a break, sweetie. It's okay. I know. It's all she wants is to be held, guys. Mm -hmm. It's okay, baby girl. I know. I know. Everything is just scary to them. Everything. But she's fine. And she'll be okay. Right, Penelope? You'll be fine. You good girl. You good girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, guys. We're going to get her in a tub and we're going to finish her up and show you what she looks like. The purpose of this video was to show you guys that grooming a small, or in this case, tiny dog doesn't always mean an easier job. In a lot of cases, it could be more of a challenge than doing a large dog. Small, nervous dogs require more focus and awareness. Being more cautious and careful as accidents such as nicks, cuts, or God forbid, falling off the table can easily happen. In a case like this, always keep your hands on the dog, try your best to anticipate the dog's movements, and as with all dogs, never leave them unattended on the table. On behalf of Anthony and I, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one.